Okay? So, now the exercise is, as far as when we're progressing in dementia, the peripheral vision, then there's a few things where when we're working with the individual, we just want you to understand. So this is that, as you progress in dementia. There's, <clears throat> you want the straight line. Then as we progress in dementia, individual, the vision's in the back. It's called binocular. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm sorry, this is scuba. So you get a little bit more vision, scuba. Have you ever went scuba diving, anybody? So I just feel like I need to close my nose when I'm talking to you. <laughs> you don't have to do that. <laughs> it's to, it, if you want to, you can. Okay. <clears throat> um, scuba. And then as we progress, binocular. And as the disease progresses, monocular. Okay. So, we only do this, we only do this to share with you as we work with. We have some folks that are now visiting on Willow Lane, our dementia care unit that visit. It's important for us to always be reminded for someone that is living with dementia and as it progresses, okay, to always be in front. Of course, you know, really, that's what we would want anyway. <laughs> but if I know Nora and she hears my voice, and I can just go up to the side of her and not startle her too bad. Okay? So let's just do a quick exercise, okay, for folks that are living with dementia and the prog vision progression. Okay? So we're going to... Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. Huh. Okay, so scuba. And so you just put your uh, hands right there and just you just kind of know what your vision is, scuba. And then as um, the dementia progresses, it's binocular, and you just kind of focus on that. You might want to turn to the left a little bit or to the right a little bit. Okay. And then uh, monocular, which is left or right eye, doesn't matter with one, and then the other's covered. Okay. So we share this exercise simply to help us understand the progression. So as we walk, as we walk with folks, work with folks, care with folks, care partners, family members, that type of thing, we kind of know what's going on. Because sometimes we'll get questions, and I'll get questions, and there's questions out there. Why did someone act that way? And sometimes it's just how we approach. And there again, we do that naturally anyway. It's how you approach me is how I'll respond, right? So, okay, so let's look at a few other things. <clears throat> okay, if you'll notice, there again, some more pictures. This is healthy. Okay, this is brain with Alzheimer's. And if you'll notice there, healthy, here. Learning and memory center, the hippocampus. If you'll see the change here. Okay. Um, this is what's going on in the brain. You know, these are reasons why. Memory loss, normal. And then Alzheimer's. What's lost? So we look at loss, uh, immediate recall. We shared that just a minute ago. Cheryl um, shared that immediate recall. If I turn, and then we have to start the conversation over again. And um, you may be thinking of situations that you've been in. Uh, my uh, recall sometimes, but I normally get it back. Uh, attention, <laughs> attention to selected information. Uh, recent events versus events that could happen 30 years ago, you know. Um, relationships. Yes. I noticed that some people I've known who had Alzheimer's or some degree of it, 
will ask the same question over and over again mm -hmm. within a few minutes. You yes. Know, they might not ask it for two or three minutes and they ask it again and then three or four minutes again. That's because of the immediate recall. They've yes. Forgotten your answer, actually. Yes. Nora was stating, for those of you who didn't hear, was stating um, folks that you're discussing, they're asking you a question, you answer it, and then a few minutes later they ask you the same question and you answer it, and then a few minutes later they ask you the same question, and you answer it. That's a good point. However, we're going to go over that in just a minute. She said maybe they didn't hear you. But the fifth and sixth time they ask you the question again. <laughs> and then you get louder. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and we talk about these things. It's good to talk about these things. It's good to get it out there because sometimes, especially with a loved one, whew, <clears throat> it starts to wear. And we'll talk more in the next couple months about that as well. Now, the preserved ability, what do you got? Long ago memories. Um, Confabulation, that's a topic that comes up. That's a word that's used a lot. Um, what that is, is that different parts um, of the brain begin to die. Okay? One part, the left is learning. The right is a rhythm. Left is language, communication, uh, vocabulary. Right is your music. Um, prayer, repetition. And so in the middle is all this good stuff. And you could be speaking to someone and th they have accused you <laughs> of taking my shoes. I went to the closet and my shoes weren't there. And you were the first one to enter the room. So you took them. <laughs> now give them back. Okay? What's happening is the first sequence is the knowledge of the shoes missing. Whether or not she misplaced, he misplaced, gave away <laughs> uh, yesterday or 30 years ago, you know, whatever. And then I entered the room. So I'm it. Because there's missing parts that doesn't connect everything, which would be, you know, my shoes are missing. Uh, I'm not sure I come in to help Jean. She says her shoes are missing. I come in to help Jean. I said, your shoes, um, okay, your shoes are missing. Um, what color were they? So we'll have this conversation, color, make, style, where you got them. I don't know what year. I don't know. Uh, it's amazing to me <laughs> how many details a woman can. Um... <laughs> anyway, anyway. So, uh, <laughs> so we're having this full-on conversation, right? And I'm thinking, well, okay, well, let's see. Uh, let me call Mary Sue. Maybe she, you told her to donate them and you forgot. And then you, your reply in a normal conversation would be, oh, okay, that would make sense. Well, in the progression of dementia, parts are dying. Dying means no longer. So confabulation begins. We have to fill in the blanks. So the blanks are, no, I knew I had these shoes. I now don't have them. You were the first one in the room. You took them. But this thing says one of the things preserved is confabulation. Mm -hmm. is, but it sounds like you're saying it isn't preserved um, because you're losing the connection. No, it's a good question. Nora said that preserved is confabulation. And she uh, was stating that it sounds like that's something that's not preserved. Actually, the act of confabulation is an activity that we sometimes do if we forget something and we're embarrassed. So if I'm embarrassed, I forgot something, I'll, you know, 
take a few minutes and, and try to fill in the blanks and make something up. Actually, right? I've never done that to you. <laughs> no, no. Right, right. And so it's preserved, you know. At, one, at, at some point, that will not even be any longer as you progress. Does that make kind of sense? It's kind of an activity that you actually can still do, you know. Yes. Well, yeah, the what she was asking, you don't consciously make it up. Your brain um, kicks in, was your words, to fill in those blanks. And that's actually what the act of confabulation is. It does. It still works like that. But it's to the extreme of, I just wrote a check. Why did you take my checkbook? Why are you stealing from me when actually Hank was just helping me uh, write a check so we could get a bill paid? <sighs> Good question. Good question. <laughs> uh, so let me share the 50-50 rule. It's different for each. So this is where knowing an individual for a time frame can help. So I accumulate interesting things about you, um, and I begin to have a conversation in hopes that I can at some point redirect. Redirect is not a childish term. Redirect is to get someone that is becoming anxious that doesn't understand why they're anxious. We, we do that a lot in, for folks that are living with dementia because memory loss, vision loss, hearing loss, you know, those things make, make us anxious. You know, just being in this room talking about dementia is, can make you anxious, right? So those things, it's 50-50. It's, it's you knowing the individual and trying to help the individual. So for the checkbook, um, it could be, well, I'm sorry. I take the blame. I'm sorry. Yes, you're absolutely right. Instead of, no, you've lost your mind, obviously. <laughs> And I didn't take your money. I don't even want your money. I don't, I don't even want to be, uh, uh, you know? Woo! Because they're accusing you, right? So you're like, oh, I'm ready, you know? But, you know, there's, there's, it's different under here, right? So this is why we, we look at these things. This is knowledge. We're getting knowledge so we can help, or be helpful, or just know. Yes? You haven't mentioned the word paranoia. Yes. Uh, paranoia, I, I think it's very close to, and I would say even very um, connected to uh, anxiety. Uh, when, I begin, when I become anxious, they kind of go hand in hand, just in my experience. When I become anxious about something, it's normally... Uh, there again, the, the checkbook, we've heard that a lot. Money, finances, um, socks. You know, I had, yeah, you laugh, but I'm serious. Socks, I had some socks, and you took them. They were my favorite. Well, they're my favorite now. Oh! <laughs> this is an example of what you don't say. <laughs> Yeah, let's move on. We got a few more minutes. Yeah, yeah. I had a friend whose mother would call the police because somebody took her crystal and then he would come over and she'd accuse him of having taken it. But then next week she'd call the police again because mm -hmm. somebody stole it and she had to pack them up and she pretty much didn't think so. Right. Right. If you remember last month when I did the role play, um, wow, 
there was a lot of toilet paper. <laughs> right? In the role play, lots of toilet paper? Yes. Does gender have any impact on the amount or the uh, process? Or, or that's an excellent question. Actually, in my four years of doing this, that's the first time that I believe that I've been asked that. Gender. She wants to know if gender has um, anything to do with progression of the disease, would you think? Okay, yes. Uh, rapidness, yes. Um, that's an excellent question. I've not seen or heard of any statistics that's factored into the umbrella of dementia. That's a great question. Yes? Just a reminder that we can be told <laughs> when we're young certain things that when we're older uh, have a different, mm. you, you get a different reaction, like you're crazy. Yes. You know, or you've lost your mind, you mm. said before. So, oh, I've been told that when I was this high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yes. So you have to, you have to be different. <laughs> Absolutely. Language. There's a few more things I want to touch base on before we, our time is up. Huh. Uh, understanding language and the change. <clears throat> understanding. Hearing. Now, this is an interesting, interesting one. Remember when communication is um, starts to go, and you're having an issue communicating, or you keep asking me the same question, okay? And we're, I'm answering you. And there was hearing. They may not understand. And if you remember, I also said sometimes we talk too much because communication is going, okay? So if you notice, one of the things in research, the hearing is not something that necessarily always goes. This is normal, over here. This is late Alzheimer's. The hearing, there's not a lot of change there. Okay? So what... I'm sorry? Yes. Absolutely. But you stole mine, so. <laughs> so the interesting thing is what we normally do, what's, what they're not understanding is that we're talking too fast or too loud and they can't understand because what their loss is communication, vocabulary, comprehension. Okay, that's lost. And we're thinking they're just deaf. Have you got your hearing aid in? <laughs> now, this is the world of dementia, not normal aging, okay? It's a good time to remind you of that, okay? Dementia. And so we get louder when that's not what's lost. What's lost is the communication piece, not the hearing. It's very interesting. Um, understanding, there again, can't interpret words. Okay? We're talking too fast. Less is better. Little is better. Redirection is more simpler with fewer words because communication is not as... Uh, we're losing that. Okay? Uh, missing some words. Communication... There again, it's that comprehension and that communication, vocabulary, words. I would like to go to, to get, okay. There's a lot of words missing, but I expect you to understand what I said, so let's get to it. But you don't know what I said, because some of my vocabulary is missing. So we, we have to help them fill in the blanks. Uh, gets off target, okay, that's one of those natural memory loss things. Um, preserved, can get facial expression, there's that vision again, okay. If you're upset with me, I'm going to see it on your face before I ever hear it or understand or comprehend it, okay. Uh, tone of voice, you getting upset with me, you getting louder, with me because I keep asking you the same question. You see, they can't help it. The person living with dementia cannot help it. 
we're going through these workshops so we'll understand what's going on, okay? Um, can get some non-verbals. There again, that's the first one. Remember what we said, vision. Uh, and then what's preserved is learned how to cover. It's kind of more back to that confabulation. Um, we learn how to cover it up. And we'll see that in, in, in the first to mid stage, you know, um, where we'll confabulate or um, fill in the blanks ourselves until we are not able to do it as comprehensively, so to speak, for lack of a better term. And moving right along, behavior. Let's look at that. Up top is our sensory motor. If you'll notice some folks, I've had folks to say, well, they just seem in their right mind. No one's ever said that to me, Carl. <laughs> However, they should be able to walk. So they're going to get up and they're going to walk and they're going to fall. They can walk. It's just up here, the disease is taking that sensory motor so they're not able to take those steps. There's a disconnect from the brain to the legs. Okay? Um, so we've experienced some of that down on medical. Uh, so sensory motor is up top here. There again, left here, uh, automatic speech. Uh, no, left. Sorry, I'm confused. Uh, let's drop down to the bottom. Here, left. I'm getting confused where the brain is. Uh, formal speech language center, okay? So language is on the left, and then you've got on this side the right uh, here, which is the automatic speech, the rhythm, the music. Some of those things are preserved more so. And I'll tell you a quick... Oh, gosh, my time. Yes. So with language, it seems odd that S would do because that's language. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me explain the right side. Um, for those things on the right side of the brain, there's a real quick explanation of uh, cussing. A lot of folks that have, you've never heard cuss before are in this disease and they begin to cuss. Um, and just real quick, my time is fading, uh, real quick... The right here being reserved, you'll have some folks that can't communicate, but if I start singing, amazing, how sweet the sound. Okay? So, just like you did, they do. Music is preserved to the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here... As, uh, now, this is what the research says and, and, and how we're trained to understand. When we're growing up, we're told you don't say that cuss word. It's a no, it's a no, it's a no, it's a no. Okay? So we understand what it feels like from the other side, up here in the front, the uh, frontal lobe. Okay? I call it the filter. It's just easier. Filter. Um, so you grow without a filter. Some that don't have dementia still don't have a filter. Um, it's interesting. It's the last thing to develop as you grow from child to adult. It's the last thing to develop. Uh, it's one of the first things to go in this disease. You know, that blouse looks really great if it was on someone else. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I know that obviously you probably should go back to the hairdresser and get a refund. <laughs> now you laugh. Whew. And then we won't even get into the weight thing. I mean, there's just no filter. None. Okay? So, but... Um, so as you grow old, I mean, when you're a child, no, 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 you don't cuss, you don't do this, you don't do that. Um, so it's preserved in the right. This is just statistically in science. 
we learn it in the language no. We put it over into the right side, okay? So when all this begins to die in the disease, we start cussing up a storm because it's reserved. It's very interesting, but that's the science behind what you know I say is true if you've been around someone that just sweet. And I mean, we, I used to have this lady uh, down the medical. She's no longer with us. God rest her soul. She could cut you to the core and was so nice about it. <laughs> wow. She was so nice. It's like, oh my gosh. Wow. Did she just say that to me? And it was so, I mean, it was nice. But she just needs you to know. So the, the, the frontal here, the filter is what I call it. Um, and then real quick, I'm so sorry, we're going to have to close. Um, more sensory uh, changes, um, awareness, ability to locate, uh, awareness of feeling, uh, preserved um, areas of sensitivity. Folks that are living with dementia, get your facial expressions and your actions. If you're tense, they're tense. They, they get that more than the, the talking, okay, because it's communication. Um, Self-care changes, of course, those continue. Um, preserved is emotions. Uh, the doing part, they can do. They can be cued. Uh, but if you'll just notice the... Okay, notice this. That's what's going on. Language, we've talked a little about that. I'm going to have to just skip right into the last one. Okay, so uh, we've talked about a lot of stuff. Next month, um, we're going to take more stuff of what we learn and do more of a, um, uh, more role play, more hands on of communicating what we've learned. Um, so there's lots of stuff uh, that's going on. Main thing, main thing is person living with dementia. Brain is dying. A lot of what we're talking about in learning is, as we've already stated, for everyone that has a dementia, these are true. Some work differently. Some parts of the brain uh, die sooner. Um, maybe this one goes before this one, that type of thing. Okay? However, we want to go... The basics for success in living and working with, some, with individuals that have dementia. Be a detective, not a judge. Use your approach as a screening tool. If something's going on, we might want to encourage, um, you know, an assessment doctor. Always use the sequence. Visual first, verbal second, and never touch anyone. Because you don't want to be touched before you talk to Okay? Uh, match your help to remaining abilities. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, the next time. So.